Get ready. In the next 13 minutes, you're about to learn everything you need to know as a beginner inside Premiere Pro. Stick around. Tyler here from Video Editing with Tyler White. And if you want to learn how to edit video like a pro, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. You first need to know how to create a project before you can start doing anything. And this can be done two different ways. So when you first open up Premiere Pro, this home screen will come up and all you have to do is go over here to new project. That's gonna bring up this new project screen. And the name is gonna be whatever you wanna name your video. And the location is gonna be where the video is gonna actually be saved to. I have a project folder on my external hard drive specifically for organizing my projects. So I'm just gonna click on whichever folder that I create make sure that this is organized by name and inside of here are various different folders and these folders are to make sure that I keep everything organized throughout my edit. I have a folder for projects, video, audio, music or sound effects, graphics if I have them, stills, miscellaneous and my exported video will go inside of this finals folder here. You just click on that projects folder. This tells Premiere Pro where to save my project. I'm just click choose and then all other settings should remain the same. Just click OK. You can also create a new project once you're already inside of Premiere Pro by simply just going up to File, New, clicking on Project. Then you'll just go through the exact same steps and then press OK. Once you've created a new project, you're gonna see a bunch of different tables, a bunch of tabs, a bunch of things that it's gonna seem a little bit overwhelming at first, but we're gonna go through each individual one so you understand how to navigate the program. So here at the Assembly tab is where you can import and drag onto your timeline. Then you have the editing tab, which I primarily use because it prioritizes the timeline. It gives you an area, a bigger workspace, and still allowing you to access certain parts of the program. The color tab up here is gonna be specific for color grading or color correcting your footage. Then you have the effects tab here, which prioritizes the different effects over here on the right hand side. It just makes it a little bit easier to navigate. The audio tab is specifically for audio. The graphics tab here is for whenever you're dealing with any type of graphics or text. This is how you'll be able to edit any text that you create. You don't have to use every single one of these tabs. I primarily use the editing tab or the color tab, and these two are all I really need. And sometimes I'll use the graphics tab for any text that I have in order to do a little bit more in-depth editing. There's a lot of people that will only edit in the editing tab because they don't like the time it takes to go between the different tabs. And you can do that by simply just going up to window, going over to essential graphics, or whatever you're working on, just add that to that section. You can move these around, place them in various different places. And if you make a mistake, you can easily fix it by going over to Window, Workspaces, and Reset to Save Layout. And that just reverts it back to Premiere's default setup. In this tutorial, I'm going to be navigating through the different tabs, so you'll see more in depth what I'm talking about here soon. Now it's time to bring your footage into Premiere Pro, and this can be done in a bunch of different ways. It can be done here in the Editing tab, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to go over to the Assembly tab, and I'm going to show you how it's done. Once you have the Assembly tab open up, I want to make sure that I click on the Project Window over here. Once that's selected under where it says import media to start, I can right click, go down to import, and then go under my video tab. That should be where my footage is located. And I can select all three to import all three at once, or I can select one individual and just press import. That's going to import all my clips. Being organized inside of Premiere Pro is extremely important. And in order to stay organized, what I like to do is I'll go down here to this folder and I'll click create a bin. And what I'm gonna name this is clips or footage, you can name it whatever you like. Select all three of these clips and then drop it into this folder. And I can make this big or I can make this small. This allows me to keep everything organized. And if you can't see this view here, all you have to do, if you're currently in the icon view, all you have to do is just go over here to switch to list view and it'll bring up that list view. I can also import things into Premiere Pro by simply selecting as many that I like and just clicking and dragging into Premiere. Once you've imported all your footage, it's now time to create a new sequence. So this can be done by just going up to File, New, Sequence, and it's going to bring up this table here which contains various different presets. These sequence settings are gonna be the settings for your entire timeline. Most of my footage is shot at 1080p, 24 frames per second. So usually what I'll do is go over to Digital SLR, go down to the 1080p tab, select the 1080p, 24 frames a second, and then just press OK. If you have 4K footage, you can go down here to Red, Go down to 4K and pick whichever setting that you like. But for this tutorial, we're just going to go with the 1080p 24 frames per second and press OK. Now that you've created a new sequence, it's time to start adding clips to the timeline. And usually what I like to do is go and select all the clips and drag and drop them onto the timeline wherever. If this little window pops up, don't click change sequence settings because you've already preset your sequence settings. What I want you to do is just press 
keep existing settings. You also have the option of adding clips to the timeline individually, and you can trim them before you even add them to the timeline. But all you have to do is just double click on the clip, use this little marker to find the spot where you want the footage to start, press I on the keyboard for in, go to the end where you want the footage to stop, and press O on the keyboard for out, and only this section is going to show up on your timeline. Then you're just gonna click on the picture, drag it onto the timeline, and just select keep existing setting. If I wanna add music to my video, I wanna first make sure that I have license to use that music. I get a lot of my music from epidemicsound.com. The link will be in the description. Once you've downloaded your music, you wanna make sure that you put it inside of that music folder, navigate to that folder, and just click and drag that inside of Premiere Pro. Then what I wanna do is go down here and create a new bin, name it music, and just drag that music into that music folder. This keeps everything organized. I can add that music to the timeline by simply clicking and dragging that down to one of the audio layers on the timeline. Now it's time to start making cuts in my edit. So in order to do this, I can just press C on the keyboard or I can go over here to this little razor tool and go to a spot on the timeline that I want to cut. Just click on that, press V on the keyboard, that brings up the selection tool. Click the area that you want to cut and you can press delete. If you wanna push the footage over, it's just then double click in this white space area and delete it. Another thing that you can do is right click on the clip and go down to ripple delete and that just snaps the footage over. When I want to start adding effects to my footage, I'm just going to go up here to the editing tab and down here in the bottom left, just click on this double arrow here and just select effects. And inside of here, you have your presets, lumetry presets, audio effects, audio transitions, various different effects that you can navigate. So if I click on video effects, I can go to any one of these effects. Let's just go to blur and sharpen and I'm going to just add a Gaussian blur to one of my clips. Then what I want to do is go up here to effect controls. Make sure that you've selected that clip. And this is going to bring up all the settings for that video. And I can scroll down, go to that effect, and I can adjust the blurriness inside of effect controls. I can also create a keyframe so I can go to the very beginning of that footage, select the keyframe, make it really blurry, then go forward a few frames, bring that back down to zero, and then that blur, it'll actually blur in. You can do a bunch of different things with keyframes. The effects control panel doesn't just allow you to adjust the effects on the video. It will allow you to also adjust the video itself. So I can change the scale. I can zoom this in by bringing it forward. I can change the position going up or down. I can also rotate the footage in here. Scale this up a little bit and change the anchor point. I can adjust the opacity, bring that down if I need to. It allows me to make a bunch of different changes to that video. When it comes to color correction and color grading, what I like to do is actually go up to the color tab. So when I click on that, it gives you a bunch of options over here on the right side. You have basic correction, creative, curves, color wheels and match, HSL secondary, and vignette. It's important to know the difference between color correction and color grading. Color correction is exactly how it sounds. It's correcting the footage or editing the footage to make it look the way that the human eye sees it. Color grading can be used in addition to help set the mood or set the tone of the video. But before I start doing any color correction or color grading, I want to make sure that I have my vector scope and my waveform opened up over here on this table. If yours doesn't show right now, you can do this by simply Simply right clicking and then select vector scope YUV and that's going to bring up this little circle right here and then select waveform RGB and that's going to bring up this little waveform graph right here. I can spend a lot of time talking about these two tools here but it's important to stick to the basics. For the waveform graph, this graph tells me a lot about my colors. The top of the graph up here being my whites and the bottom of the graph down here being my blacks. You can see that some of the whites are slightly blown out up here at the top. And if I drop the blacks down really low, you can see that the blacks are crushed as well. When we're color correcting our footage, we wanna find that happy medium. So I'm gonna reset this. My goal is to have these spaced out up and down across the graph without blowing out the whites and without crushing the blacks too much. So I can do this by adjusting my exposure just ever so slightly. I can bring up the contrast and notice how the blacks are starting to go down a little bit. I wanna bring the blacks down a lot more. So what I can do is just drop the blacks down a lot, not too much bring down the shadows just a little bit, bring down my highlights just a hair, drop that exposure just a little bit. I also wanna keep in mind my white balance. So if it's incorrect, I have the option of clicking on the white balance selector and just clicking on something white inside the clip, or I can adjust the temperature here, take it right or to the left, or I can adjust the tint and go from left to right and just dial in whatever I want it to be. But I'm just gonna use the white balance selector and just click on the white portion of the video and that works for me. I can also go down here and adjust the saturation, bring it down, bring it up, 
And now you can see that most of the colors are spread out across the entire waveform. My whites aren't super blown out and my blacks aren't super crushed. My vector scope can tell me a lot about my colors. It'll tell me about my saturation because if I bring it up, you can notice that this actually goes further out. And if I bring it way down, footage turns black and white and you don't really see anything on the scope. Now it's time to color grade. So all I'm gonna do is just close this basic correction tab and then go down to creative. I'm gonna go under looks. I'm gonna find one of my own custom LUTs and I'm gonna drop that on the footage. And when you add LUTs to your footage, LUTs stand for lookup tables. I have some free LUTs on my website that I'll leave a link to in the description. You can download them. But sometimes when you add LUTs to your footage, it's actually too much. So you can fix this by adjusting the intensity by bringing this down, or you can bring this up if you need more. The intensity is gonna mainly focus on the contrast though. You can also go down and adjust the saturation as well and that will affect your colors. If they're too bright or they're too saturated or you want them to be more saturated, you can bring this up or you can bring this down. You can also close out this creative tab and go down here and start messing with the curves, hue and set versus saturation, hue versus hue. But I think that's a tutorial for another video. If you'd like to see a tutorial like that, leave me a comment below and let me know. And that's how you color correct and color grade your footage. If you want to add text to your video, you can do it by simply pressing T on the keyboard or going down here to the type tool button and just clicking on it. Then click anywhere inside of the video frame and type in whatever you want the text to say. Then I'm going to go over here and select the selection tool button. And inside of effects controls is where I can start editing my text. So I'm just going to click on this little drop down arrow. Then I want to make sure that my text is selected and I can change the font. I can change the size of my text. I can also change the distance between letters. I can add a fill, stroke, background, or shadow. What I also like to do sometimes is go over to the graphics tab, and the graphics tab will actually give me more options to edit my text. So I'm just gonna go over here to where it says edit. I'm gonna click on it, select my text, and I have the option to center my text. I can adjust the position. I can go down here, I can change the font as well. The graphics tab just gives me a lot more options when it comes to editing my text. Once I'm ready to export my video, I first need to tell Premiere Pro what section of the timeline I want to export. So if it's the entire video, I'm first gonna go to the very beginning of the footage and press I on the keyboard for end. And then I'm gonna go to the very end of the footage and I'm gonna press O on the keyboard for out. This tells Premiere Pro the in and out points for the area I want to export. Then I'm gonna go up to File, go down to Export, Media, and this is gonna bring up my export settings. I first wanna make sure that the format is set to H.264, then just leave preset as match source high bitrate because this is gonna to change to custom as we go through the various different settings. Then go down here to output name, then you're just gonna to navigate to your finals folder, click on it, name it whatever you wanna name it, and just press save. Then make sure that you have export video and export audio checked. If these aren't both checked, one or the other won't export with the video. Scroll down, then make sure your basic video settings match what you want to export your video at. You can do this by unchecking if you need to change it. Click this unlink button, then make the changes necessary, then you can relink and then recheck, or you can just simply click match source. Then scroll down, make sure that your frame rate matches whatever you want it to be. If you need to make any changes to the frame rate, field order, or aspect, you can just simply uncheck and then click on the drop down and make the necessary changes. Then go down and make sure that render at maximum depth is checked. For performance, change that to software encoding. Make sure that profile is set to high and level is set to 4.2. For NTC, it's gonna be based off of where you're currently located. So if you're located in the United States or Japan, you're gonna use NTSC. And if you're from Europe or Asia, you're gonna use PAL. Then scroll down to your bitrate settings and just change this to CBR and change target bitrate to 40. I do have a more in-depth video on export settings inside of Premiere Pro. So if you're interested in that, I'll go ahead and link that up in the YouTube cards. Now you can check that out as well. Then click on the audio tab. Just make sure that the audio format is set to AAC, audio codec as well as AAC. Sample rate is 48,000 Hertz and then channel set to stereo and then audio quality is always gonna be high. And then just click export. Continue to perfect your skills by checking out this video. Edit like a pro by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. I'll see you in the next video.